I'm also one of those people that love to make kale chips. And it's one of those snacks that basically everybody in LA eats. And I think everybody everywhere should eat it. It really is tasty. If you're like rolling your eyes right now being like, oh, kale chips, another person talking about fucking kale chips. You make kale chips tonight and tell me you don't like them. Tell me, tell me. Via Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, or Facebook. Okay, Harto, I don't like kale chips. There, I said it. You see, the first one is pretty good. And then the second one is just okay. And by the third one, they just, eh, they're just so darn dry. But I do have a dish that will satisfy your craving for slightly charred kale. That is good to the very last bite because the leaves remain juicy. First, let's learn to wash and store kale properly. If your leafy greens are wilted and rotten a few days after you buy them, you're doing it all wrong. Wash your sink out thoroughly or use a big bowl and fill with water. Untie the bundle of kale and discard any leaves that are starting to rot. No need to discard the whole leaf, just the rotting part. This will prolong the life of the rest of your kale. Kale stems are too tough, so this is a great opportunity to remove them and discard. Unless you want to use them in your smoothies or some other repentance food. If this was Swiss chard, I'd cook the stems. They are delicious, but removing them at this stage makes it possible to fit the huge leaves into a salad spinner. Now agitate your leaves gently to help them release all the sand stuck to them. It will sink to the bottom and you can scoop out your leaves into a salad spinner. Don't cram in more than the spinner can comfortably handle. Cover and spin. Removing this excess moisture will prevent your greens from spoiling as long as possible. See how much water we got out? Dump the water before doing the next batch. Put your kale on a dry paper towel and repeat the drying process with the remaining kale. Add it all to the paper towel and roll it up. Oops, kale overboard. Place in a plastic bag or a large container. The goal of the towel is to absorb the remaining moisture and retain a good level of humidity in the bag. This way your kale won't rot or wilt. Tie up the bag, but don't worry if it's not irritated. You can cook the scale immediately or store it in the fridge. Cleaned this way, kale will last one to three weeks, depending on how fresh it was when you bought it. Kale shrinks a lot, so find the largest pan you have and set it over high heat. Mine is 12 inches in diameter. Add two tablespoons of grapeseed or some other high heat oil and wait for it to get very ripply. Chop your kale into bite-sized pieces. I like to scrunch it up into a tight ball and slice. Then chop the other way. No need for perfect evenness. Fill the pan without packing down the kale. If some kale didn't fit, save it for the next time or another batch. Your kale should be scarily loud. If it's not, the pan wasn't hot enough. Now the time starts to tick, so you'll need to watch closely and act quickly. Cook the kale just until the leaves near the perimeter of the pan start to turn emerald green, about 30 seconds. Don't stir. If you leave it alone, it will brown a lot better. Cover the pan, keeping the heat on high, and cook for 45 seconds. Turn off the heat. On electric stove, move the pan off the burner and let it sit covered another 45 seconds. Don't let it sit any longer or it will wilt too much. When you open the pan, the leaves on top should be fluffy and emerald green. And the leaves on the bottom should be crispy and brown. Sprinkle it with salt and move to one side. Add one tablespoon of butter, a garlic clove grated on a microplane zester, and a generous squirt of lemon. 
If the butter is unsalted, add a pinch of salt. Quickly stir everything together, taste for salt and get the kale out of the pan. That's it! It might take a few tries to get the timing just right for your pan and stove. So I'll include a few troubleshooting tips on my blog linked below this video. Mm. Juicy as a kale salad, but only tender and with some crunchy bits. And only takes three minutes. That's big. Mm. If you have any leftovers, they make a really stunning hummus, caramelized onion, kale, yogurt sandwich. Any suggestions for other vegetable makeovers? Don't be shy and leave me a comment. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.